Imagine sitting at your desk and the computer that you're using is run by a cell and all the data that you're saving is stored in DNA. This isn't just the future, this is right now. Introducing biocomputing. Biocomputing is using biological substances to carry out computational tasks, such as data storage. It first started in 1994 with Leonard Adelman. Leonard Adelman had a theory that DNA could be used to carry out computational tasks. He thought that DNA could be used to solve a problem called the sa traveling salesman problem. The traveling salesman problem stated that a salesman had to go to n number of cities, but he could only visit each city once. Now for a computer to carry out this task, it would take years sometimes, especially if you had a higher number of cities. Adelman thought that DNA could be used to carry out this problem within hours or even days. So he decided to test it out. First, he picked the number of seven cities. This was a short enough amount of cities that it wouldn't take the computer forever to do it, but long enough that it would still take a while. Then he assigned each city a 20 mere oglinucleotide. An oglinucleotide is a short strand of DNA that is composed up of the four letters A, G, C, and T. 20 mirrors just meant that it was 20 letters long. He then made it so that he would run the computer and the DNA sequence at the same time. He figured out that since the DNA could run all of the paths at once, it took it much less shorter time than the computer, and it confirmed his theory. This is how biocomputing started. The first main component of biocomputing is using DNA for storage. As humans, we produced so much data that we no longer have the ability to store all of it. This might not seem very important, but as we've learned from the past, anything saved from a civilization can be important to the future generations. And this is why this became a problem. Currently, silicon chips and other computational storage devices can't hold what we're generating. That's when scientists started to look for DNA. DNA is something that's found in nature, so we know we have an eliminated amount of it. And the idea is that you will sequence DNA by turning binary code into nucleotides. Binary code is the code that your computer uses for data storage. It's composed of zeros and ones. A nucleotide is a letter adene, cosetine, guanine, or thymine. These all stand for different chemical components of DNA. Now, each of the letters is then assigned to a number value. For example, A is equivalent to 00, zero and T is equivalent to 11. One, one. The number values are then converted from zeros and ones to A, G, Cs, and Ts. This creates strands of DNA that is then sequenced into actual DNA strands and stored in a vial of water. We can now access this data anytime we want and can resequence it to find out what it says. This is extremely important because as long as we have DNA, we can reread these files, which means future generations can have access to all of our data. The next major component of biocomputing is Boolean logic. Boolean logic is a form of algebra that is commonly used in computing, which makes sense why it would be used in biocomputing. Boolean logic consists of phrases such as and, not, or nor. In biocomputing, Boolean logic is used in the cell, not the DNA. To use Boolean logic, first we create toggle switches in the cell. Toggle switches are essentially the switches that will do the functions of and, not, nor, or or. Now to create a genetic toggle switch, we have to insert different genetic material into the cell. This is important so that it'll carry out the function. Once the toggle switches are inserted, then the cell can carry out computations for Boolean logic. For example, if you are telling a cell to turn on the computer, then you might have to have input A and input B on, which would be an AND toggle switch. The final component of biocomputing is a more futuristic one, and it's harnessing the metabolic power of active cells to re-engineer the machinery of cells. 
This would be really helpful if we wanted to have a specific output or solve more complex computational tasks. Since cells have specific proteins that make it work the way it does, by using the power of the cell that helps it create its function, we can change the cell to do what we want it to do. And this is still very futuristic. There's not a lot of research that has been done, but the research that has is very promising, and we are hopeful for this. So what is the future of biocomputing? Is this really applicable? It is, because we can use biocomputing in every field. We can use it to solve medical problems or engineering problems, and ultimately it's going to help us save a lot of data storage, which we already learned about. This will help people. It could cure cancer. It could change the way we look at the world. Biocomputing is the future of our world, and it's gonna change the way we do things.